So now in this part, we're going to focus on the effects of zero gravity or well, microgravity. Again, there is gravity in space, as we said. It's just a little bit. And so when we think of microgravity, obviously, we think of people floating around. We think of things going crazily. But one of the interesting aspects, I think, of microgravity is how it changes the movements of fluids. There's a classic example if you're uh, an astronaut in space and you're pouring water, you see these bubbles, right? Water doesn't flow down because there's no down. There's not really gravity pulling it down. Uh, and the surface tension, as we said, the, the physics of how the fluid is held together is actually quite strong, meaning that you can have balls of water in space, droplets, um, those sorts of things floating around. Um, but not just kind of these waves. Uh, the classic example I always like is uh, if you saw the movie Gravity and Sandra Bullock cries, well, the tears would sti stick to her face. They don't just fall down. And, you know, so it makes fun things uh, interesting, like washing and drinking and that sort of thing. But there are real physiological problems that happen as well. So... Right now, we've got gravity, it's pulling uh, us down to the earth. It's also pulling the contents of our body downwards as well. Inside of our body, all of the fluid is getting pulled to the bottom of our body. If you take away that gravity, it'll all distribute upwards and that means that people get very puffy in their face. They feel they're, like they've got a bit of a cold or a flu. They feel like they've got sinus congestion. Um, you can see Chris Hadfield here, the vessels in his neck are all sort of absolutely engorged with blood. And not only that, the, the counter of that is that your legs become really skinny in space. You lose about two litres um, of fluid from your legs, which goes to the top half of your body. Um, does that matter? Well, it turns out it does matter. Uh, because when fluid goes up to the top half of the body, it goes up into your head. Your head has a fixed closed box around it which can't uh, contain all this pressure and it puts pressure out on your eyes. It pushes your eye, the back of your eyes forward and it means that people's visual acuity goes down in space to the extent that when some astronauts come back from space, they actually lose their driver's licence as they're not able to see well enough. Uh, having all this pressure up in the top half of your body puts strain on your heart as well. So this here's an ECG which was taken of someone in space. So this is looking at the electrical rhythm of somebody's heart. And it's got that characteristic sort of beep, 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 beep. Beep, beep noise that you might have sort of heard um, on medical shows where the signals are going through the heart causing it to beat in a regular rhythm. So this was taken in space and it was going normally, normally, normally and then suddenly rather than the beeping that you want to hear it goes beep, 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 beep. And this is one of the few socially acceptable times where you can electrocute someone to shock their heart back into a normal rhythm. Luckily for this man it actually reverted by itself uh, because this electrical rhythm is not really compatible with life. Um, he was evacuated from space because of this um, and has not been allowed back into space since.